Hi there, my name is Austin Lawrence, and I want to tell you about the one-week filmmaking program I did with the New York Film Academy at the Walt Disney World Studios in Florida. First day, we got signed in at the Celebrations Hotel. Um, they had a pizza party for us students, and then they took us to Epcot, and they reserved a spot on the lake for us where we got to watch the fireworks show, and it's also the light show as well. It's really cool. They also had snacks and uh, a little bit of food and they had ice cream and drinks. And we just had a great time. Got to know some of the kids that we were having classes with. But we had a great time. Um, then they took us back to the hotel where um, everyone went to the rooms. And for those that were commuting like me, uh, my parents picked me up and uh, took me back to the resort hotel we were staying in. Uh, the next morning we had uh, a story class in a script class and we talked about a uh, story arc and a hero's journey and the basics of how to develop our story um, and we were trying to figure out ideas for our story that Monday because Wednesday we had a shoot and we needed everything planned out ahead and our stories written and um, to fully figure out what we're gonna do so we uh, also had directing class we had a cinematography class hey guys it's Austin today's day two of digital filmmaking for New York Film Academy camp here at Disney. Uh, right above me is the Celebration Hotel. And that's where most of our classes are going to be. The rest of them are going to be at the Disney Studios at Epcot and stuff. But yeah, it's exciting. Second day. So much fun. There's three parts of production. There's pre-production, production and post-production. We are right now in pre-production. So we were going through what our stories were going to be about. And we had like a group discussion on what we, what we thought our stories were going to be about. We described our story, what was going to happen. Um, we bounced off of each other's ideas. People told us what we needed to improve, what they thought that our characters should do. They told us what we looked, what they liked that, what they didn't like that. Um, we had some great, amazing teachers that assisted us and guided us. Um, but we, we had a great time. Um, Tuesday, we were our storyboards and our script was due. So the next morning, uh, we went, we had a class on how to direct actors, and that was taught by the acting teacher a little bit. And we also, our director teacher also taught us as well. Um, the actor teacher told us that if the actors do bad acting, it's not always their fault. It's mainly the director's fault, because the director has to get the performance he wants out of them. And the director has the vision for the film, and so in, the director, in his mind, knows how those characters act, how they need to look on screen, and he's trying to help them make them look good. So it's really our fault as directors if we don't get what we want out of the actors for the films, or our films, of course. Um, our director teacher told us a little bit about Clint Eastwood. He was an actor which I had already knew, and he became a director. Um, when he became a director after acting, um, he did not like how the directors always said action, because action can throw up the actor a little bit, especially if it's a dramatic scene, it's slow, it's drama, you know, a love scene or something. Action just throws off the actors when you say it. It gets them like, I don't know, a jolt or something. But Clint Eastwood, he always tells his actors, after he says, his camera rolling, the, camera, the cameraman says, camera rolling, everything's ready. Then he tells the actors, when you're ready. Um, it helped me a lot when I did my film because a lot of my scenes, I did not want my character, my actors to get off their lines or thrown off, so I would say, you know, when they're ready. They, they thanked me for that, they were very comfortable with that. Um, and I only said action when we had uh, a running scene or when we had a scene where one of the characters uh, had tripped and kind of got in a fight with the character. Um, and that, that, that's, that's when the actors need, they need that pump, you know, that's when you say action, you know, to get them like kind of pumped. Um, and that's the only time really we should use those that we learn, you know, action is when it's intense moments, when you're running, when the character's fighting, when something's going on where you need that extra energy. So that was really cool. Um, we also got to go through storyboards um, with our producers, which were the New York Film Academy teachers, which was really cool. It's like having a real producer. Um, we told them uh, what kind of characters we needed for our, what kind of actors. We told them what kind of personalities these characters had. We talked about what props we need. We talked about where we need to shoot, where we need to film. Um, we talked about our, our whole story, went through it piece by piece, showed them our script, um, they gave us feedback, a little bit of guidance, um, but it, it was great though, they want to make sure we're prepared because we cannot shoot if we are not prepared. 
um, that's one of the requirements. And I was director one, and I, I'm one of the first directors to direct on Wednesday. And so we have two units, um, well, we have two units on Wednesday that go out and shoot. And so at the end of uh, Tuesday, we get signed off on our stories and our ideas that we get permission to shoot the next day. So at the end of that day, um, we go into Wednesday. So on Wednesday, we have to be there at 5.30, we get there at like 5.35, um, we, meet, we meet our actors, um, we get our, we meet our crew, we get to talk a little bit about what we're about to do, then we go out on set. Um, I shot in Paris, France, um, the set in Paris, and that was fun, I had Eiffel Tower in the background, really cool. Um, but the only thing with being like 5.35 in the morning is it is dark. My story takes place in the morning. I lost about an hour of my time. We get two hours to shoot for each production. There's two units that go out and film. I was unit one of the first two hours of filming. And I had to wait. So while I was waiting, never lose time. Never sit there and wait until the sun gets out. Um, well, I went around with my actors, told them what I needed from them, what their lines were kind of going to be. I went around with my crew, talked about what our first shot's going to be, set up our shots so that we're ready. Um, and we had to white balance later when the sun comes up. Um, I went through the whole area where we need to shoot because I, in my mind, I have where our shots are going to be. I have my storyboard, my story, but it looks, it looks different than when you envision it. So you're looking at the shots where you need to get for that day. And going through where, okay, we're going to get this shot here. I'm going to, no, we have to move this shot here because the way that this wall is here. Or, you know what I mean? You just have to choreograph that, especially with some of the scenes that I had to do with running and just where my characters were going to move and walk. Um, because I lost that one hour, it was like bam, bam, bam. I try not to rush my actors. It was towards the last couple shots I had to rush because they warned us. We had, you have like five minutes. I'm like, oh my goodness, I still need like six shots. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do, you know? And... Getting six stars not getting one shot at a time. You have a couple takes sometimes. Thank goodness we only had like three times we had a retake. Um, I sadly did not get three shots I wanted, but I made the story work. The story still flows. I had to change a little bit, but in editing, I fixed how to tell my story. My story was told well. The audience is able to understand what story I'm telling, what's happening, how these characters feel, act, how they are. And we have no dialogue in these films, so I'm trying to tell a story without dialogue. And I think I mastered that and I accomplished that. Um, you can always do better, you can always critique yourself, but I, I think I did the best I could. Um, and then we have also two more hours during the day after my shoot. And so I was AC, assistant cinematographer, on a shoot in Japan for my best friend, uh, Santiago. And he's from Mexico, but he's living in China right now. Um, and that's another cool thing is a lot of these kids at your camp that he becomes best friends with, they're all over the country. Um, one of my actors, she was from Georgia Atlanta, which was in the United States, but I had another actress from Africa, and she had a French accent. I had a girl from Brazil in my film, and it was just really cool. And my crew were from everywhere. I had a um, Santiago, he had, he's from China. I had Evan Lee from Mexico, and I had another girl from, I think it was Austria. Yeah, so it was just cool, um, but also can be difficult at times because they know some of them know very little English. But it's cool though because you know you have just you get to communicate. There's so many ways you can communicate with that person. Just understanding that's where being animated because I'm a very animated person. Animating what you want, talking just talking to a person, you know. So just had a great time and our shoot went well for uh, San Diego in Japan. He had a good film, good short film, and that all went well. Um, after the, his two hours were up. Uh, we headed out, packed up, um, went back to the vans, went back to the hotel, finished our next classes. We had an editing class with Sean Sullivan, who's one of the professors at in California for New York Film Academy School. And he, the man's amazing. He he's so passionate about what he does. Gets he got really excited, you know, and uh, should I say use Final Cut Pro? Um, and he taught us like everything detailed. There was even some stuff I didn't even know how to use in Falcon Pro. It shows the shortcuts and just he was just a great teacher. He's just one of those that you know he, t he teaches everything he says you remember in just the way he teaches. Just so much just great energy you get from this guy. Happy guy. Oh my goodness. He just is awesome. And he's had experience. He's edited films, TV shows and it's just really cool you know talking to a professional you know. It was really cool and uh, as a group he projected um, on the screen uh, Falco Pro, and he had footage 
um, of old black and white cowboy movie with a famous actor. I said I can't remember his name, but uh, they were shots. All these shots of one main scene of these cowboys getting in a fight over a lady in like the main street of the town. And what was cool is all these black and white shots had the slat board of all the scenes. So these were unedited footage. I don't know how he got it, but it was really cool. But um, as a class we edited, we were like, oh, this white shot, this cowboy's about to punch the main bad guy. It's like, how, we, how should we cut this? Should we cut this before he punches or as he punches? We're like, you know, like as he's going into it. So like we go from this wide shot, he's about to go punch the guy. We cut it. And then we go to a different shot with the camera on the same scene where it's closer up, close up on the punch, and we have to cut just right so it flows, so it, does, it stops, so when it, it cuts to where he punches, so it's not like he's about to punch and then stops, he's still about to punch, and then he goes in. We want it to be about to punch, starting to go in, stop, and then right from that same area, close up, punches. It just it flowed beautifully. We made it commodic a little bit. We added the music from... I forgot the name of it, but it's like, can't touch this. It was hilarious because it's a fight scene. But just, we we had a great time. Um, we edited this short film just for practice. It, it was fun. Um, and that was probably a lot of us first directors because we were going to be editing that day. The first and second directors. So um, we had uh, another cinematography class that day. And then uh, for us first and second unit directors of that day, we went and edited an editing room upstairs. On, on nice Apple computers uh, using Final Cut Pro. And what's awesome is they already upload everything for you. All your footage is there in Final Cut Pro. And it, it's just nice. We didn't have to deal with that. But the biggest thing when you do shoot is you're in charge of your SD card. And you have to give that to um, Kevin. And he's the guy who's over all the equipment. He is in charge of getting that USB or SD card. The SD card to the computers and uploading it all and you cannot lose it because that's all your footage and we mark it and stuff with gaff gaffer tape but yeah so it was it was fun day um the next day uh we got at 5 30 in the morning and filmed we shot in like japan and italy um and it, it was really fun again i was a uh, director of photography that day and i'd also been a gaffer and grip and that was fun uh, we get to, and that's the cool thing. We all get to work on several films, and we get to do every single job on a production team, a crew, um, which is fun. And you get to interact with your crew, especially as a director. You get to know how to work, you direct your crew. It's really fun. Um, and then that day we went back. We finished editing, and uh, and we had I think a, I think we have like two other classes I think, but mostly the day was editing, um, which is nice during the class. They give us a couple breaks, but anyways. Um, the biggest thing today is they all told us that um, Friday we get to go to Walt Disney World. There's a catch to us having fun on Friday. They told us on Friday we can go to Magic Kingdom, but we have to have all our editing done Thursday night for our films. And you better believe we all finished, including myself, editing Thursday night so we could all go to the Magic Kingdom Disney World. So the next day on Friday, because we were all able to go, they gave us all three-day park hopper tickets to be able to go to any of the parks, but they told us we had to go to Magic Kingdom. But it's for three days, so Saturday and Sunday we could go too if we wanted after the camp's over. Um, they all got fast passes, which was awesome. We were able to get on the rides quicker, but there's a lot more people that have fast passes nowadays. But it's still better because it's, it's July. Disney's hectic. But we had a lot of fun. We were in pairs because we liked the play system like the Boy Scouts. So we were in two pairs together. And I was playing with my friend Santiago. And we were, in, we were with a lot of the other groups as well. We paired up a lot of times in the park and we had fun in all our groups with all our friends. Uh, and then after that, um, we were told that we were going to have a graduation dinner at Animal Kingdom. So we head back and we had to be back by four. Um, then they took us to the hotel to get cleaned up or use bathroom or whatever. Then we went to Animal Kingdom, and we, in this whole time, we're going through the back areas. We get to go behind the park and see all the cool kind of scenes. And so we went to the back entrance of Animal Kingdom. And the cool thing about Animal Kingdom is that they are building something that's rumored that I can confirm 
They're building the Avatar Land right now, which we got to see. Could not take any photography. I'm so sorry. I couldn't get anything. They're watching us like crazy. I didn't want to get sued. Or my iPhone camera taken away. But it was awesome. They're building this really cool, like, metal tree thing. And then this big building that looks really cool. This might be an IMAX seat or some indoor ride experience. This is really cool. And this really cool roller coaster. Like, they have, the, you know, the normal roller coaster with the tracks. But this was, like, different than, than your normal tracks. These were, like, future, like a, the future of, a roller, future of roller coasters. You could say. It was, it was cool. And um, when we about when we entered the park, the back area of the park, um, the teachers of New York Film Academy all played in the vans the theme from Jurassic Park, which was awesome because you know I mean, it's Animal Kingdom, it's like going to Jurassic Park. So as we're driving, go through the gate, you're like seeing these jeeps and stuff, and then you see the cages and enclosures, and they're building bigger enclosures and stuff. It's like Jurassic Park, and then like, you see a rhinoceros, you know, in the cage and passing by and we're like, this is so cool, you know, and um, then you get to see the Avatar and then there's the Everest and stuff and like it'd be really cool as if we really saw a dinosaur be in a cage and as we're driving on the road, there's this big cage enclosure and there's a dinosaur and we're like, what? It was awesome, awesome, it's like Triceratops, oh man, it's so cool, but it was spectacular, but the only thing is, is like, I thought this is going to ruin the movie Magic, Disney Magic for you, but like, I thought Mount Everest was all the way around Mount Lennon, but the way they built it is it looks like it from the back. It's just flat, like, studio metal. But that was a letdown. I did not know that. Didn't have to know that, but, you know, it happens. But it was cool, though. The whole back area. We went through the back area, and we came out at the uh, dinosaur ride area. That's where we popped out at from the back. But the Disney people said that we arrived earlier than we were supposed to or than they expected. And so... We were allowed to ride all the rides until it's time for us to eat. And so we went on safari and like there was all the animals out. It was it was, it was awesome. Got to see the lions, um, they have baby uh, elephants now and baby giraffes, so I mean it was so cool to see the wildebeest and you name it. Um, I think the ostrich was like the only ones we didn't see though on it. But it was really cool. I saw a lot of animals a lot more than I've seen them past going on that ride. It was cool. And then we got to ride Mount Everest unlimited times. Like, that's like the best ride at Disney World. Literally. Oh, that was so cool. And they actually finally have repaired the uh, Bobble Snowman or the whatever you want to call it monster. The Yeti had been repaired, the robotic Yeti in the ride. And when I went, it was out because they were repairing it. But it was, it was still such a cool ride. It was really cool. Um, and then. After that, we went to a private dinner area. Um, they have like the special dining area that's behind the dinosaur. I had no idea what's behind there, but it's like for exclusive people of Disney or the CEO or corporate people get to eat there and dine in. It's not for it's not open to anyone in the park, but we got to eat there. We had a nice dining table with like you know a tablecloth and we had like servers. And, it was very nice. Um, the York Fit Film Academy even got us an entertainer, and he was hilarious. He was awesome. And we just had a great time, had a great dinner meal, and just had fun uh, last night. Um, and then the next morning, we got up, and then around 9.30, we went to the hotel, and we had our private screening of all our films together. And we had pictures together. We each got a USB drive with our film on it. We got a disc with all the films that we worked on other kids and ours including on a disc and CD and we got our certificate from the New York Film Academy which was awesome and the best thing though I think that I was blown away by I did not know but like in the beginning of when we were when they show us our films is that you hear the the Disney logo for their um, Disney pictures where it's like da 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 and when it came up, it was the castle, and then it was the Statue of Liberty for New York Film Academy, and then the Disney Castle for the Disney Studios. And the coolest thing is we got both those logos before our films. I mean, who gets to have permission and the rights and be able to have the ability to have the Disney logo legally 
before they're filmed that they help produce your film. That's like the coolest thing ever. But it, it was awesome. We had a great time. It was sad saying goodbye to everyone, but we had a great time. I met a lot of friends, and the majority of the kids were from everywhere around the world. Anywhere from Africa, Australia, Brazil, Mexico, China, Europe, everywhere. America, Canada, you name it, they were from everywhere. But I just met tons of friends, and it's cool now I can literally say I have friends from all around the world. It's pretty cool, but it's just, it's just one way to network, you know? But I had, I had a great time. It was really awesome. And that whole week, my parents had gone to the Universal Studios as an adventure and the Universal Studios. Parks. I guess they can Harry Potter stuff, and New Diagon Island, and they just finished being built. And they went and had fun all that week, going to the parks and stuff without me. Well, I've been working and in classes all day, and they surprised me. It was the best surprise in the world. They surprised me to be at Universal Studios. Oh my goodness. So awesome. I mean, the rides there are mind blowing. Disney has good rides, but Universal, oh my goodness. Like, the experiences, like the, the rides that are have give you the experience of being in the movie. We went on the Terminator, you know, like we thought we were just in the like watching a 3D movie at first, or these normal the, these chairs and like there's a like IMAX screen and you have 3D glasses. But then all of a sudden it turns out to be a, a giant movie set, and then you have um, you have 3D, and then you have holograms, and then you have real people acting out this the whole Terminator 2 movie. And you have like Arnold Schwarzenegger is like he's on the screen and then he goes into 3D and then fully jumps out a guy because of Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Terminator jumps out in a real Harley motorcycle out of the screen onto the stage and there's guns firing robotic robots that are literally like an animatronic puppeteered and oh my goodness mind blowing fire and like they move when an explosion blowed up like your seats were oh. It was awesome. And Harry Potter, Diagon Alley, oh my goodness, it's like you walked on set. You not only walked on set, but you are in that world. It is so detailed. The stores are perfectly from the movie. It was just awesome experience. Like, Nocturne Alley was super cool too. And then the, the Hogwarts Express Station, where you go into like the London, um, the London train station. And then you see there's the brick wall. And you go through it, and it's hologram. You go through it, and you enter into nine and three quarters Hogwarts Station. It is so cool. And then you go on the train. You can drive all. The, you can get on the train and, and go all the way to the castle, like the real experience of the other part of the adventure. And like that's even a ride. It's just so cool. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hi. Oh, I approach. I was brought up with important words. I seem to have neglected your presence. I'm certain you will forgive me. I have a question. Did you have a question? Yes. What makes uh, Goblin Silver yes. so special? <laughs> what makes Goblin uh, Metal so special? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Transformers ride. The Transformers movies were okay, but that was like awesome. It was like you were there in experience. You were in the experience. It was a roller coaster ride, but you were like in a set. But then it went into 3D and hologram, and like half the time you weren't sure what if you were if it was real or not. It was so cool. Uh, but there's just tons of ride rides, and the Mummy that freaked me out. That ride. That, but that was a good ride, and like all those other ones at Universal are so good, Harry Potter, Hulk, and all those phenomenal rides, but I had a great time, and I'm so glad my parents surprised me, my aunt and uncle with that, um, surprised me with that. I had a great week, one of the best weeks of my life, always remember it, thank you. Hasta la vista, baby, I'll be back.